um, Terry Davenport, architect director for BDP, and I had the privilege of leading the uh, Liverpool One master plan team from day one of the project, project which has taken some eight years of, of my life and been uh, fantastically rewarding, not least because I'm a sort of a son of the city. Just looking at the, uh, the background to the history of the project, it was one that was uh, visioned uh, back in 1998-99 uh, by the city in terms of the formulation of their brief. The city was in desperate need of, of major regeneration catalyst and it was seen that the uh, Liverpool One site or the Paradise Street development area as it was then known was going to be the catalyst for the city's change. This particular drawing on the right is one of the very early sketches that we produced for the um, defining the, the principles of the master plan and like many early drawings there's intention of, of uh, routes, intention of public spaces and in, in the case of uh, Liverpool One uh, and the master plan in particular uh, the, 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 the very important intention of wider connectivity to the surrounding districts. Uh, we talked about connection to the regeneration of road walks, critically the connection to the existing high street, how that was going to be achieved, connection to the north to the uh, existing uh, business district, how they were going to be achieved. Clearly the refocusing and uh, recreation of the two hectare uh, existing park, a park that prior to the development of the master plan was, although an attractive public green space was effectively space left over from Second World War bomb damage and of little real environmental quality but you know, respected and, and, and liked uh, by Liverpool because of its uniqueness uh, within the city centre. A city that because of its commercial drive had very, has very few high quality green public spaces in its heart. So this early vision of those uh, routes, those spaces, the increase of those spaces as we get towards the, the grand scale of the magnificent Liverpool waterfront was key to the, the visioning of the master plan but it's not just about a sketch, it's not just about the intention Liverpool wanted to be in about the delivery over an eight year period of this vision through the master planning process, through the concept development process with the wide range of teams engaging on the project and through of course a huge technical effort by BDP and the other executive teams delivering what has been visioned across these 22 sites and almost 40 individual buildings within the project. Well, I think the fact that the you know, mass plan has been shortlisted is, is hugely important and it, and it recognises uh, clearly the, the roles of, of master plans in delivering quality spaces, uh, quality environments and ultimately a framework to, uh, to vision very, very high quality architecture and ultimately a variety of architecture across project, which, which essentially is what has been delivered through, um, through the Liverpool War One master plan. Well, in terms of chances of winning, I, mean, I guess the obvious response is one of six. I mean, who knows on the night? Um, there have been surprises before. Um, the, the master plan may not be favourite in, uh, in the bookies betting at the moment, but uh, we're, we're certainly going to be extremely excited. and. Uh, Clearly, the, the, the recognition of, of BDP's achievement and uh, Grover and the city's achievement to, to reach this stage is a tremendous reward in its own right, it has to be said.